What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. My name is Omar, your host, Senior Cultural Partnership Strategist for Finish Line JD. Last week, we had Aaron Donald, and today we got a very special guest. We got Todd Gurley. How you feeling, Todd? I'm doing good, man. How you doing today? Doing well, doing well. You know, trying to stay healthy, you know, active at the same time, and yeah, you know, make the best of what's going on, so. Nah, no, I feel that. That's definitely mm-hmm. really the only way, way to go about it, just take it day exactly. by day. Mm-hmm. Cool. So let's jump right into it. So take us through your journey as like a three sport star athlete and now as an NFL pro bowler. Um, I mean, man, just like growing up, you know, just obviously just always being active in sports, whether it was just um, always played football, um, got into basketball late, you know, started playing at middle school and then um I think I think around middle school, that's when you try to try to figure out what you want to do. If not, then just try it out. Just try to do baseball, try to do football, try to do basketball. And I think I was um, by the time I got to the eighth grade, that's when I did, you know, three sports. And then uh, once I got to high school, you know, I was playing football for so long that I, you know, I just wanted to focus on. Just maybe just trying to play basketball because I was playing football so much. Mm-hmm. So um, really just getting into to both. And then really my coaches um, talking me into running track. You know, that's kind of that's kind of how, how I started running track. And then that's how I, you know, kind of fell in love with all three sports and becoming a, you know, three sport athlete. Um, and and like it just track, keeps you busy. Man. It keeps you busy for sure. Yeah, I feel like, you know, when you're playing, especially in high school, it's always like basketball and you end up doing track and field or football and track yeah. and field because they just literally go hand in hand. Yeah, and then, you know, I don't know, um, you know, if there's much proof behind it, but, you know, people <laughs> be like, you know, run track is going to help you for football. And then, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, do basketball is going to help your cardio for track. So, you know, all three sports just kind of just – came hand in hand it was back to back to back so um it was fun though man i wish you know i wish one sport i could have played honestly i wish we had it in my school was um lacrosse Mm. i felt like that would have been fun playing um and i wish i would have played baseball in high school but you know uh, i made the best out of the three sports as i could then it didn't turn out too bad you know yeah nah (laughs) man i mean at the end of the day um you know, it was a blessing just to be able to be able to do what I'm doing now. Like you say, go to multiple Pro Bowls, um, you know, to be an all pro. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you never think 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 that stuff going to happen. You know, just young, you know, you're young, you playing the game. All your friends are playing the game. And, you know, you're just out there having fun. And then to be able to just, um, you know, leave a legacy behind, just keep accomplishing great things. And not only do it, like, do it in the NFL. It's hard, like, you know, um, so many great, so many, you know, great players, great teams. And just to be able to just keep doing it is, is a blessing. Absolutely. So um, growing up in North Carolina, right, take us through some of, like, the uh, issues or, like, the trials and tribulations you faced growing up within your community. Because for me, like, you know, I grew up in the Bronx and yeah. especially the South Bronx so in New York. So you can only imagine the kind of things, like, especially at a young age, you're seeing and trying to avoid, especially like staying off the street and things like that. So take us through your youth and what you had to face to, you know, get to where you are today. Um, yeah, man. I mean, like I said, just just growing up, you know, not to make it sound like a like an interview, like a Vlad interview or nothing, but oh, you no. know, <laughs> growing up just like like it like it's just regular, you know, um, a lot of stuff I didn't realize, you know, maybe how bad it was because it was just, you know, everyday life or regular until I got to the point like of how I do things now and how I live now and then, you know, just look back at things. But you you always appreciate the the things that you that you didn't have and that you have now. So um but yeah, just growing up, man, I mean, you know, poverty, um, you know, just hanging out with the guys. But mm-hmm. like I said, it wasn't really never an issue because you know, it was just like you said, it was just every day, like, you know, just yeah. you know, walking, you know, driving, like not really, you know, you know, you stay. You don't really realize it until you get into like 
you yeah. know, older and you're like, damn, like, you know, someone else grew up like this and I had to deal exactly. with this. Mm-hmm. It's like, like they say, like, you know, product product of your environment. But right. Um, right. but now that you do look back at it, it's like, man, damn, we didn't have these um, these programs going on when I was growing up. We didn't have these mentors or, or like, um, obviously had mentors, but not like, you know, um, you know, celebrities or whatever, like monumental like figures in the community coming back um, and doing great things in the community. So I feel like just for me to be able to just like come from where I come from and then just, um, you know, I feel like it happened overnight, but it, it was it was definitely a, a, you know, 10, 15 year, you know, thing playing and to be able to be in the shoes I'm in today and be able to just give back, you know, do philanthropy. Like, yeah. it's, I don't know, man, it'd just be crazy just thinking about it sometimes, you know, it's just like um, how to um, roles reverse, you know, being able to, to to do great things in the community, be able to have a voice, be able to, um, you know, actually make a change and make a difference. So um, that's that's really just really what I'm on, man. Just just yeah. trying to do better, you know, not only by myself but by others as well. And then just just leading the way, leading the way, showing guidance, um, showing true leadership and commitment. Yeah, and that's a great segue to the next question because I know you touched on it a little bit as far as like how those experiences help shape your view on like or, or like just all around like outlook on giving back and philanthropy. Yeah. Um, I think it just helped me out a lot, you know, just to know, like, it doesn't even have to be much, you know, yeah. it's just, you know, one, one moment can, can rechange someone's life or, you know, they can remember that forever. And just to be able to go back, um, where, whatever, go back, to Tallboro or do philanthropy work around, you know, the cities that I play in. And just to actually spend that time, you know, it's just, it means a lot, not only to the kids, but then only mean, it means a lot to the community, the cities, the towns. So it, it goes a long way, man. People really appreciate it, especially um, whether it's something little, you know, whether, mm-hmm. you know, you do the camps, you do donations, um, around the holidays, um, you know, you do drives, book bag drives, um, yeah. you know, turkey drives. So I think just um, just showing people, you know, uh, that is hope, you know, giving people motivation, um, something to look forward to, but then also to be happy, especially around times like this, Thanksgiving, Christmas, yeah. um, New Year's, just to be with the family, be able to be thankful and, you know, just, just have, great memories with the family throughout these times, especially during, during these days with the COVID and just dealing with the whole year that we de- um, dealt with. Yeah. And I feel like it's especially true, when you, especially for kids when sometimes you just want to see like you're real and you're like one of them. And, yeah. you know, even if it's like five seconds and them being able to like actually see you or just be in your presence, that's like a big deal for them. Yeah, and you need the kids around, man. Like, the yeah. kids, they keep it real. Like, you know, <laughs> if they like, you did something sorry, they're like, bro, why did you do this in this game? Or, like, why are you, you know, they're going to be like, you ain't better than so-and-so. So, like, you know, they always stare at the pot, but it's funny, man. Like, one thousand. You know, exactly. Yeah. Like, you was, you was that kid as well. So, um, and they, they are, they are. They'll bring you back down to reality too, man. Mm-hmm. They'll humble you quick. So, you know, sure. that's that's one thing you gotta you gotta like about kids. And then even the kids is like, I'm gonna be better than you, or I'm I wanna be like mm-hmm. you. It's like that's cool. That's what you're supposed to do, you know. Right. Um, that's why, you know, time is moving, changes, you know, change is happening, like, you know, records are meant to be broken. Yeah. And, and you should want that. You should want that for the youth, you should want that for all the younger generation. Um, you know, whether it's football, you know, the salary caps and the guaranteed monies, hopefully when 10, 15, 20 years from now, it'll be way better, you know, um, yeah. guys be able to stay in the league way longer than that, than they are now instead of three and a half years. So yeah. you just wish a lot of stuff just 
just keep changing, um, you know, slow but surely, but things are, are, are headed in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So speaking of kids, like, take us through how the May Foundation came into fruition. Man, it, it really came just by really everything I was saying, man, just by here, just doing stuff here and there um, around the holidays. Um, and then just growing, just growing as as men, you know, growing as people, um, been able to do, you know, everything I, I ever imagined on the field. So yeah. it's just like um, being able to just just give back, you know, me, me and my friend Jamie, you know, he came to me and he started the whole, the whole idea with the foundation and making a difference every day. Yeah. And, you know, it was just time. It was time to to do better, to to want more, but then also be able to just get back, you know, because that's, that's what it's all about. And that's, you know, the thing about just trying to be able to create a legacy, create your own lane, and then also be passionate about something and, and give back, you know. Yeah. We always say it all the time. It's like, you know, it's good to have um, – you know, one friend that make it, but, you know, why not have, you know, two friends, three friends and, and have success with your friends, your family, um, your community, and then just, you know, everybody just being able to give back, man, and, yeah. and, and just see see the youth rise, see them overcome, and, and just become great as well. Yeah. And then, um, especially when you speak about the May Foundation, how important is it or rather, how important is the work you've been doing with the foundation and inspiring the kids to, you know, make a difference every day? Man, I think I think it's been going great. Um, like I said, we just just really getting the ball rolling um, to be able to, you know, get a partnership with UGA, you know, the school that I went went to, um, love dearly, and you know, to be able to make a commitment with, commitment with them, and then only not only that, but with myself and. Um, it's it's been it's been fun, man. Been able to do a lot of social justice stuff over over the summer. Um, you know, link up with with a lot of people, especially now. Um, you know, during the, the pandemic, you know, is our big our big thing was doing the camps. You know, trying to get camps across all sports, and you know, it kind of slowed things down. But um, with being able to just hop on a Zoom call, just like we are right now, it's just so much easier to get stuff done. You know appreciate um, people like Finish Line for reaching out to be able to, you know, have me talking right now and be able to, you know, present my story, present, you know, um, what I want the foundation and, you know, myself to do in the future. So I think just, you know, just head into the right direction, you know, trying to get partnerships and and do the right thing, you know, not only by ourselves, but, you know, for the future of the kids. Absolutely. And for me, you know, uh, having been like a product of like receiving like assistance from a foundation, uh, yeah. Sean Carter Foundation, just realizing, understanding how important it is and the work you've been doing as well, especially when it comes to kids since they're so impressionable at a young age. So yeah. them seeing like a role model like yourself and being able to help them, then that would encourage them to do the same thing once they're in the same position. So, you know, us at Finish Line JD Sports, you know, super proud of the work you've been doing and big fans of yours. So normally I have like a big novelty check. I make a donation, but since I'm in a hotel, I'm going to have it this time around. But we want to make a nice donation of 20000 to the May Foundation. So just to help you continue doing the amazing work you've been doing. Man, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thank you, Finish Line. Um, you know, the May Foundation, we just want to say thank you for, for your support. For, for being able to, you know, tell my story yeah. and to, to help us just make a difference every day. So thank you. Um, really appreciate that, man. Yeah, of course. You know, that's the goal to inspire like the next generation. So partnering with foundations like yours definitely uh, pushes that message forward. So super proud of you and definitely continue to keep up the work. And yeah, I mean, that's all I got. Unless you got something else with these closing remarks. Um. I don't think so, man. Anything? I, I think I'm good, man. I appreciate that. I like that jacket too, man. It's fresh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I gotta get my, my people at North Face to send you something. Yeah. Where you at right now? You in New York? Uh, I'm in LA right now. Oh, you in LA? Yeah. yeah. How the weather is, is good out there? 
No, that's cool. I mean, I feel like the weather was just perfect to throw on a jacket like this. So. Yeah, no, nah, it's L.A. weather, though. Like, you don't got to have a jacket or you can just throw a jacket and still be like, it'll, it'll be, be cool. Good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Appreciate the time, Todd. And thank you. Again. All right, man. Appreciate you, man. Safe travel. Be safe. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for the Thank smile. you, guys. Appreciate it, my guy.